Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about the shoulder rest, the chin rest, and the violin setup, and why they're so very important. So when you think originally um, that violins were held basically on the chest, with maybe the chin supporting it and the hand at the shoulder of the violin supporting it, um, the neck was much shorter, the fingerboard was much shorter, and there wasn't really any need to go much higher than fifth position, really. Um, so the hand could sort of basically do everything. So the design of the violin hasn't changed because the emphasis has been on the acoustic values and the aesthetic and beautiful values. And uh, the height of that was in Stradivarius time, Guarnerius Amati. And uh, we don't want to mess around with the design of, you know, what is perfection really. So the addition of these accessories like the chin rest and the the shoulder rest became has become quite big business. And as the demands of music has become greater, um, the necks, most a lot of older violins have grafted necks, longer necks. The fingerboard became longer and we're all flying up and down the violin like this. And we need certain kinds of support according to um, the kind of um, length of neck you have, shoulders, you know, the, the kind of body that, that you actually have. And one thing that's very good to think of is to make the violin accessories, the, these parts, the, the things that can be changed, the, the chin rest and the shoulder rest, make them mold around what your body is, rather than putting up with a lot of pain and um, allowing that to um, compromise your technique because that's what it does. As soon as you have rigidity and pain, for example, in the shoulder, which is so common, in violin playing, um, it starts traveling your, around your arm and you've got compromised technique. Your left hand becomes incredibly compromised. So, so let's start with the chin rest. Um, I'll show you my chin rest. This is a lovely high wooden chin rest, which I find very comfortable and even more comfortable since I moved it from the middle uh, um, you can see from the hole that it was designed to be put over the, the tailpiece right in the middle there. And I did have it like that for many years until I was the last time I was messing around with my setup, trying to make it more comfortable. I took the chin rest off and moved it to this side. Oh, absolutely night and day, really comfortable, fantastic actually. And there's nothing wrong with that chin rest, putting it there. You know, it still functions perfectly. And it works by putting a little tool, a little metal tool in and turning these um, from the holes, turning these until it becomes loose and you can take it off and mess about with it as you like. Just be very careful the, not, not to scratch the varnish. If you lose the little tool, you can use a pin. And you put the pin in and turn the turn these until it becomes loose. But for heaven's sake, be so careful not to touch the varnish. Be very careful and with it. Without a shoulder rest, the violin sits on the collarbone right there, which acts as a little shelf. And it sits there. This part of the violin sits on the collarbone and theoretically one just simply turns one's head, holds the violin and the, without a shoulder rest, the, the holding the violin is shared between the head and the collarbone and the hand. And in order to shift, one uses the thumb to make a sort of kind of forward marker up and down like this. So you use the thumb as a forward marker and a backward marker to help the hand shift up and down. 
and also to use the, the shoulder when shifting as well, like that. And the idea is to relax the shoulder again when one, one is stop, stop shifting and also to relax the thumb. Now, that's very difficult to do, <laughs> if not impossible for a lot of us. Um, it's the crucial shoulder, the crucial shoulder doing this. And there are people that have problems even with a shoulder rest with this shoulder compromising the left hand. So what to do is have a look at shoulder rests. Um, like a, a lot of modern players do. Now, this is my shoulder rest and it's got a nice um, foam, uh, foam backing. And when I, um, when I first had it, it was completely straight. The body of it was straight until I realized that it was bendable. So that meant that I could bend it into a shape that left no gaps and slightly curved around the shoulder, but not too far back. I'll talk about that later. And what I was able to do was allow it to fit exactly the contours of around my shoulder and to my chest. Uh, leaving no gaps. And that's what's very desirable. And also leaving my rounded, the outer part of my shoulder here, completely free, untouched. A lot of people put their shoulder rest on their shoulder and that causes terrible problems. It traps the nerves and the muscles of the shoulder. So try to, um, in fact, aim to put the shoulder rest so that the head can move and the arm can move. That's it. Now, what I normally do is think about a line going from the mark that I have where I place my chin on the chin rest down to the point where the shoulder rest is on my chest. A straight line there from where is, where is it it's there it's sitting there and I think of a straight line going up to that mark and down to that mark and that is actually where the violin is resting it's on the chest it's misnamed as a shoulder rest it isn't a shoulder rest it's a chest rest and that would be better to think of it like that because Let's just go back to the angle that the violin is on when it's sitting on the collarbone without a shoulder rest. And you can see that's the angle of my collarbone, right? And a lot of violinists, and myself included, would prefer that the, the violin is angled a little bit higher. And that's what this part of the shoulder rest does. It gives, it gives the angle and the height that you wish. It doesn't hold the violin, it, it only acts as the height that you wish to angle the violin at, this way or that way. Now you, you might want to have um, a much lower angle. That's what, um, that's what you will be looking at is you might be able to get a very comfortable fit here, but it's too high at the back. Fine, lower it. And um, you might find that it's too high here. It will lower it again. Get, get yourself a chin rest, a shoulder rest that is fully adjustable. And I think the one of the major parts of the shoulder rest that should be adjustable is the body of it. Uh, I mean, if you have one that you can't bend to your own shape, don't bother with it because it'll never really fit you, will it? Yeah, the second bit is the adjustability of the, the legs. They just turn around and go up and down. And when I made my big curve in my shoulder rest, 
the this leg was sticking out because of the new angle so I simply pushed it back in and made it be able to fit the violin very snugly without the shoulder rest falling off all the time. So it takes a lot of messing about with pads if you prefer, shoulder rests, um, chin rests, and, and also understanding that um, most violinists have more than one head position when they play. Um, I've got two major ones, which is facing the violin and um, facing forward. What I'm really doing, I think, is using different ears <laughs> for different times. Uh, I also put my head, when I'm holding the violin, I put my head down and it increases the feeling that the, the violin is being held on the chest, which I find very important very important not to think of the violin being held um, here. Now, just coming to the shoulder, there are uh, shoulder rests which clamp or go all the way around the shoulder and the violin hangs off the shoulder down. And I don't think they're a good idea because they clamp in the muscles, the very important large muscles at the back of the neck here, right here. And they're ones that um, are very much involved in the prolonged um, hand position that, that a violinist must um, get used to. But at the back of the shoulder here, just right there. And I don't think it's necessary to um, include those it's better to keep them the big muscle groups as free as possible. And therefore, if you can get a shoulder rest that more or less starts at the top, curves around and goes to the chest, obviously. And then think about the weight, the violin being really held on the chest and the height and the angle of the violin is determined by the back here. That's a better way to think of it because the most crucial thing about um, modern day violin technique is just the sheer amount of shifting and height and um, freedom that we will need because of the repertoire. Um, and also orchestral rehearsals are very, very tough, very hard. Areas of and if you've got very sore areas of muscle, that can very, very quickly lead to tendonitis, pain, and you have to take time off and all, all sorts of problems. And it's better to get it right and keep messing about until you're comfortable. Um, don't wait until um, you're in terrible pain. <laughs> don't wait. Try to incorporate, try to be aware of these things as I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to advise you. Um, what to look out for and um, what is going to give you the best chance of developing a lovely technique with no problems. Okay, um, so good luck with that and we'll talk about it again. Bye for now.